Rational equations are equations that involve rational expressions. Remember, a rational expression is a ratio, kind of like this one, except we really only call it a rational expression if there's a variable in the denominator. So this first example technically is not a rational equation, but we're going to start with it because it illustrates in a, a simple context the main idea we will use to solve radical, uh, rational equations. So we've got this problem, x divided by 3 is equal to 4, and I want to get x by itself. I want to isolate x. Since I'm dividing x by 3, the thing to do to isolate it will be to multiply by 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3, and you know I'm actually going to think of it as 3 over 1. I'm only writing it that way on the left side, 3 over 1, to make it clear what's going on here, that I can cancel these 3's, 1 3 with, in the numerator with 1 3 in the denominator. Canceling factors like that leaves x over 1, and of course x over 1 is just x, so the solution for this equation is x equals 12. So I wanted to start with that because now we can see how we're going to approach an equation like this where you have a variable in the denominator. It's going to be almost exactly the same. So if I start with 12 divided by x equals 4 and I want to isolate the x, well you might think of dividing both sides by 12, but you won't really isolate x if you do that because you'll have 1 over x. I don't want my isolated x to be in a denominator. So I need to get it out of that denominator, the same way I got that 3 out of the denominator in the previous problem. So what I'm going to do, so that I will not have any variable in the denominator anymore, is I'm going to multiply both sides by x. Once I do that, I can cancel that factor of x in the numerator with that factor of x in the denominator for those uh, quantities that are multiplied together, leaving me with just a 12 over 1, or 12 on the left side. And now to isolate x, it's clear that I only have one more step. I can divide both sides by 4, and there's a solution. So I'm using the same idea as in the simpler problem we started with, but one of my goals is to make sure that I don't leave any variables in the denominator. Here's an example where you have variable in both the numerator and denominator. But the only one I need to deal with at first is the one in the denominator. That's what I'm trying to avoid. So if I start with x plus 1 over x equals 4, to get this x out of the denominator, I will multiply both sides by x. These factors cancel, leaving me with x plus 1 over 1. I'll just write that as x plus 1. And I have 4x on the right. Now I have a linear equation I can solve. Uh, for example, if I subtract x from both sides, I get... 1 equals 3x, and then divide both sides by 3 to get x is 1 third. Lastly, here's a problem where we've got two different denominators with variables in them. In order to get the x out of the denominator on the left side, I know I'm going to have to multiply both sides of this equation by x. But I also need to get this x plus 1 out of the denominator on the right side, which means I'm going to have to multiply both sides of the equation by x plus 1. So I actually need to multiply by both of those things. If I start with this equation, I'm going to have to multiply both sides by x and I'm going to write it as x over 1 in both cases. I'm also going to have to multiply both sides by x plus 1. And I'm writing those in fraction form 
with a denominator of 1 just to make it clear how things are going to be canceled. Let me throw in some extra parentheses here just to emphasize that this x plus 1 goes together. That's a single number in this product. Also this x plus 1 goes together in that numerator. So what happens here? On the left side when I try to cancel these fractions I have an x in the numerator that can be canceled with an x in the denominator. When I do that, the what's left on the left side will just be x plus 1 times 1 divided by 1 times 1, divided by 1. I don't need to write that. On the right side, well, I have this x plus 1 in the denominator, which can be canceled with this x plus 1 factor in the numerator. That leaves 2x in the numerator and 1 times 1 in the denominator. So again, we won't write divided by 1 because we're at the point where we're trying to simplify. Let's finish this up. I can subtract x from both sides and we're done. x is equal to 1.